Hello and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. This week coming from a roundabout in the middle of London. A lot of traffic going past, quite a lot of diesel vehicles, probably quite high levels of carbon monoxide and particulates and other noxious gases. Although some of the buses <laughs> Some of the buses are now hybrid, not that one. But how do I know what I'm breathing in while I stand here, while a huge petrol Range Rover goes past me like that on the school run? Well, this is the reason. This is called the Clean Space Tag, and it's a tiny little air quality monitor, and it sends its data to my smartphone, another bus. So what happens is this talks to that with, through Bluetooth, so that's, and those two little holes on it there, that's the, where the air quality monitor is behind that. And then it, it, it measures the air quality. So this along here is where I was out in the Cotswolds in Gloucestershire, very, very low, 0.8 parts per million. And then, I don't know what that is. I think that's Stow on the Wold, filthy town. And then look what happens when I came into London that night. It goes up to nine parts per million. That's what that spike is. And that really tells you the difference in air quality and it also gives you a map of where you are so that's where we are in London now and you can see hang on I'll zoom in we're in Ladbrook Grove you can see that where we are is not exactly the most benign where it's red is very high counts so you can tell from this which is the best route to go best thing for us to do is get on that road because it's not as bad and these little hotspots are basically where there's traffic jams. And this is where you can see around here. So this is coming readings from other people's uh, tags that, that people are cycling around. There's another bit there, look, a bit of red up on the Harrow Road. Let's look down in Holland Park and the main roads here. Take a moment to load up. Oh yeah, ugly. Down by Labrook Grove Station, look at that. Yuck. So I've come along here to West London today to find out more about this funny little device, the Clean Space Tag. It's made by Drayson Technologies. They're just over the road. I'll go and find out more. So Paul, thank you very much for uh, allowing us to visit oh, today. It's great to it's, see you. Uh, I'm very excited to find out more about, uh, about this. So the Clean Space Tag, which I've had for a few months now, I really love this thing. I, ne I, I don't lose it, it's, which is a good clue. Because ah, I lose right. quite a lot of things or right. misplace them or put them down and forget about them. Yep. This I've kept with me all the time. What I want to know is what inspired the development of that in the first place? Well, you remember um, when we were doing the, the work on electric drivetrains and doing the, the electric land speed record? Yes. We were working on wireless charging then. Do you remember that the, yes, the yeah. car was wirelessly yeah. charged? And, and it was really because of the, the interest that we got in the work that we were doing that I was introduced to a team of people working at Imperial College here in London. Uh, and in particular, uh, a researcher who was just finishing his PhD, Manuel Pinuela, who was working on the low power end right. of wireless power. And, and people said, come down and see what we're doing, it's really cool. And I came down and it was really cool. Wow. And when we figured out that really we had a technology which could be used to recycle the wasted energy in the wireless transmissions, which just make up such an important part of our modern world, we asked ourselves the question, well, what would be a cool first application? What would be something that would really show the potential of the technology generally, but would also solve a real problem? And I suppose, um, somewhat selfishly, um, having uh, grown up and lived in London much of my life, with kids who have done the same, all of us suffer from uh, asthma. Right. Uh, so I had a personal interest in, in the whole area of air pollution and and the effect that air pollution has on health. So we also, I think, saw from when I was science minister, often you talk to people about big problems like climate change, like air pollution in cities, and people would go, yeah, 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 I get it. But I'm one person, yeah. what can I do yeah. about it? And so this is what I think is wonderful about this kind of technology. We're very lucky with smartphones, with uh, the Internet of Things, as it's so called, that we can show people how things are connected. 
So the idea was to use our wireless charging technology to power a small portable sensor, right. which you could keep, like you say, in your pocket. Yes. It would be monitoring the air that you're breathing all the time, wherever you are, in and out, and then taking that data, sending it to the cloud to give us a picture of air quality, which gives people information so they can see the air that they're breathing, but also encourages them to, to change their behavior, to actually think about what it is that they're doing, that they can avoid pollution hotspots, and what they can do to maybe tr change the way they travel so that they're not actually contributing to air pollution. I'd love to go into more detail about you know what, what we can see on maps and how you can see the map right, on your right, phone and all right. that. But what is, I think, fascinating, which I just had no idea was possible when you introduced it initially, was that, you know, I mean, for instance, that doesn't have a battery and you never need to charge it. Well, it has a, no, it has a battery. Oh, it does have a battery. But it's trickle charged. Right. That's it. So, so you, it has a very small That's right. So you don't have to change the battery. No. You don't have to plug it in to charge no. it. And that was one of, the, it's one of the things with modern life is there are so many of yes. these electronic devices. We don't want more to plug which, in. Which yeah. you need a battery for <laughs> as, you know, as we just experienced, actually, yeah. you know, yes. just now. Yes. <laughs> A little bit of a problem with the sound equipment. We'll say no more. But this is now constantly getting a little bit of electricity yeah. from the air around it, yeah. which is just yeah. extraordinary. So, and in particular from Wi-Fi networks and the 2G cellular network. Right. So those two bands. So the harvester, which is a, a, a type of antenna, which is inside the device. It's, it's harvesting energy from those parts of the electronic right. spectrum. Oh, so it's not everything. It no, is, so it's, it's Wi-Fi wi and, two, and, and 2G. 2G right. cellular. And we're talking about very small amounts of energy. Yeah. You remember in the, the Faraday Lecture Theatre, yeah. we measured it with the probe and saw that we had hundreds of nanowatts right. per square Just centimeter. Just going around the room. Yeah. yeah. And so we see this as a great way to power small electronic devices, right. free from having the constraints of plugging them in, changing their batteries and really to realize the potential of more and more connected devices, particularly sensors, yeah. where you can really change the philosophy rather than in the case of measuring air pollution, where you have a small number of very expensive sensors uh, maintained and owned by the government effectively. Right. And then you do computer modeling of the expected pollution between those small numbers of sensors to a technique where you have many, many more sensors which are accurately reading what's happening where they are. And then you combine all of that data to get a map, a picture of what's going on. And it's like a little um, nudge really to, to think about how you're living your life and particularly if you're someone who has allergies or yeah. suffers from, from asthma or, or uh, a, a health problem yeah. which is exacerbated by bad air, it helps you to avoid it. Right. Because then, what I, well, there are two things I'm fascinated with. One is the map that you, you've, got, yeah. you've got. And so the, the, the map you're, we're looking at here. Yeah, that so this is, is a map of London. Which and that is, is a map of London, and that is being fed live inf sort from of the, from updated the information, but from lots of them, not yes, just the, yeah. not these two. No, thousands, no, no, thousands, from thousands of them. Right. And that enables us then to start to get insights into what's happening where people really are. That's a, yeah. that's a nice yes. thing about this, is that rather than having the sensors dotted about the city, there's about 100 fixed right. ones, is having thousands of sensors which people are carrying. So that as you can see, this is a map where you can see the streets of London. Right. But then when people are indoors, so this is effectively a map of our office. Of, this, of the, where we where are we're, Where right. we're sitting now. And, you and can, this is all coming from these from the, the well, room. You can see right. them around, oh, yeah. around the okay. room. <laughs> and that then allows you to see what air quality is like in your office. Right. Now, um, the Royal College of Physicians issued a report back earlier in the year where they really showed the link between poor air quality and health. Right. And they said it's important what's, what's in the air that we're breathing as we're going about our daily lives outside. Yeah. And that's why we've got to you know, get rid of the internal combustion yes. engine. Yeah. But indoors, it's as important. Yeah. And we spend most of our time indoors. And so the causes of, of bad air quality indoors can be all sorts of different things. But because we live a life where often we keep the windows closed, mm. you know, have air conditioning systems and so forth, Sometimes it's really quite hard to know, well, what is it that's going on? Yeah. So what we're trying to do is, again, put information in people's hands. That's what we think the power of this technology does. Yeah. It enables you to have sensors which can provide people with information on their smartphone. What are the actual uh, substances that are measured yes. by it? So we're, we're talking about carbon monoxide. Right. So we chose uh, to measure carbon monoxide for two reasons. Really, really um, the most important one, it's relevant to both indoors and out. 
So carbon monoxide levels are, are, are really important whether you're outside on the street or indoors right. at home. So therefore measuring that is important. But also it's a great indicator of overall of, of air quality outside. And so, as you know, uh, lots of different elements of air pollution are measured. Nitrogen dioxide, particles, PM 2.5, this 2.5 micron particles. But they tend to go up and down together depending upon the vehicle mix right. in your particular city. So we have in the measurement of carbon monoxide a measurement of air quality that's relevant for people in, inside their homes, keeping an eye on whether or not they, they've got you know, sufficient fresh air in their houses, yeah. whether or not they've got a leaky boiler or, or something that's going on in their house. And then outside in the street, when, it, when you're cycling, if you're cycling behind a you know, diesel lorry, often not a good thing to no. be doing. Um, or whether or not just generally, because there's been congestion in, in an area that that street is um, pretty polluted at the moment, yeah. you know, go down another, another street and give people the information to be able yes, to do that. Because to, to, that was one of the things I did notice, which was, which was you know, fascinating to look at. That one day I was walking through I, you know, right in the middle of town, Westminster, Soho, that sort right, of area. Right. And I did, I did, I just happened to look at it before I went in the meeting I was in, and it was really low. Yeah. The, the, the region, yeah. I went, God, that's amazing, I'm right yeah, in the middle yeah. of London. And then I realised, ah, oh, because there was a really strong wind blowing that. It was a really right. windy day, all the trees right. were whipping right. about, the right. shop signs blowing over. Yeah. And then about two weeks later, I was there, and it was a really still yeah. day, and it was really high. So, so that's beautiful. It's fairly thing. obvious. No, now, but, you know, the thing, but, but the beautiful thing about that is that having gone through that experience because you've had the data and then you've gone oh that's strange yeah oh right i get it you've you've really seen for yourself a truth that air pollution changes all, all the, the time. time yeah and that's one of the things which which i saw when i when i, when I was, was a minister is that often people would see a big problem and they go well what can we do yeah. you know with something like air pollution, once you get people to understand that it is changing all the time, yeah. therefore there is something we can do yes, about it. Yes. You know, yeah. it starts to get a collective sense we need of the a possibility. Giant fan to the yes, west of that's, London that's blowing off. Exactly. <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> so, I mean, have you got other applications that you kind of? Yes. So we're about working on some really exciting stuff where we're using the the free vault technology to power different types of sensors. So sensors that measure temperature relative humidity, um, sound, uh, right. so, and in the same way, the same principle, using the same sort of software, being able to get a picture of what the relative, so for example, in a museum, where it's very important for the artifacts to maintain good control over relative yeah. humidity, often these are buildings which have got some challenges in terms of retrofitting complex wired systems. That's a great application yeah. for the technology. Then we're also uh, developing flexible uh, circuits, and flexible harvesters, mm. such that you can put the harvester into materials, into wearable devices, wow. such that you, you, you add some functionality. Yes. So um, in, this, in the same way, you've got you know, the ability to find your phone. It would be really cool if you had a, you know, a very precious jacket. You could have a find my leather or jacket. Or find my socks. Or indeed, find your socks, if that's an issue for you. Really. It has been. Yeah. yeah. So, um, right, oh, that is very interesting. So, so, yeah, so it's, about, yeah. it's, 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 it's a combination of the ability to provide that power supply in a useful way embedded within a device, yeah. but also clever circuit design, clever use of software to be very efficient in the way in which the, the, the data that we get out of that thing, whatever it is, is taken up to the cloud without, again, using up too much yeah. energy. And it's a combination of efficiency in the, in, the, in the way we use machine learning, a bit of artificial intelligence in the way we do that, and the way in which we, we use the FreeVault technology to power the sensor yeah. that together makes a really efficient way of getting this picture of, of whatever it is that you want to measure, air yeah. pollution, yeah humidity, whatever, and then presenting that to people in these sort of visual dashboards and apps on, the, on your phone where it's useful, it solves a problem, yeah. and it becomes invisible, you know, yes. because uh, it's just there and it just works. Yeah.